I have a story that illustrates just how strong body dysmorphia truly can be. Just as a preface, um, body dysmorphia is much different than uh, gender dysphoria. That's not what I'm talking about. First, let me take you back. So for most of my life, um, I've been overweight. This is me when I was a teenager. Um, it was, wow, literally like probably like 15 years ago. Not maybe like 12. Like I was bigger. Like I looked like I could wreck somebody. But, uh, you know, I was still pretty hot. But even though like looking back, I'm like, damn, I was smoking. I know firsthand, like, how society treats bigger women, and the message is that you're just not ideal. Until you're smaller, you're not going to be ideal. It's getting a little better, which I'm so appreciative of, um, but uh, that's, that's just how it was. Now I'm going to show you the progression of, and forewarning, I'm going to start talking about some pretty sensitive topics. You can leave if it's not appropriate for you. Okay, um, I'm going to show you the progression of when I started developing an eating disorder. So I started, like, you know, losing some weight. Side note, that's the bathroom I still take, uh, you know, videos until this day. <laughs> and I go out, like, courageous enough to start posting, like, body pictures and stuff, because I really didn't do that much before. I recognize what a bad example photo this is, but it's the only one I could find. Um, then I really started to kind of, like, lose quite a bit of weight. Um, and I noticed that people were commenting on how small I looked, and I was, like, eating it up, because, you know, I didn't hear that shit before. And I started to become more obsessed with it, and I'd say, I would actually pray, because uh, I was very religious, so I would pray and say, God, if you get me to this exact number, then I'll stop, then I'll be done. And I was, I, I was literally never done, didn't matter if my BMI was okay, my body fat was okay, I was never gonna be done. This is like, right before it got really bad, I'm with my friend's son, I just had to block him out, but um, yeah, this is like before it was like super bad. It's funny because uh, when people see me show these pictures, they're like, you still have an eating disorder. And I don't think you can tell if somebody has an eating disorder typically just by looking at them. But in my case, you're correct. I do have an addiction with food. But in these photos, I ate much more and much worse than I do today. And people aren't going to believe me, but if you know anything about eating disorders, it's true. I used to hoard food in drawers, like, I would always have, like, a drawer where, like, I would hoard all these, like, snacks and stuff, um, you know, I would fast for significant amounts of time and then, like, binge on all of it, count my calories if I needed to, like, expel anything, I'd exercise for hours. I remember seeing this photo and being like, oh my god, I can't post that, I look too big. <clears throat> but yeah, now's when it started to get, uh, pretty bad. My loved ones started obviously noticing that something was not right. People were concerned, and I loved it. I didn't love that they were specifically concerned about me, because I didn't give a shit about, like, that aspect of the attention. But I loved when they would be like, oh my god, be careful, you don't want to get too thin. Because that meant it was working, I was getting too thin. Like, deadass during this time, um, if I was, like, you know, because I was in and out of recovery, if somebody said to me, like, you know, oh my god, you look so healthy, and they meant it in a good way, I'd want to relapse. A lot of times I would. Because to me, healthy equated to weight gain, and I didn't want that. I wanted to hear that I was sick, malnourished. I know that's wild, but like that's, it consumes you. I have worse pictures, but this is about as far as I can go without getting in trouble. This was uh, one of my college ID photos, um, you know, during, I think it was around this time, um, it started to get really bad to the point where like, you know, um, I started dealing with like incontinence and stuff. I would have like sores all inside my mouth, um, which for some reason is common in eating disorders, I guess. I lost height that I gained back once I recovered. Not, um, a healthy time. It took me years to graduate recovery, but I finally did, and ironically, I graduated right when I started my medical transition. Crazy how that works. But I have a story for you that is so fucking wild, like, even when I remember it, like, I can't believe it happened, it was just one of those things. So I know, I'm aware this sounds a little creepy, um, but when I was really sick, um, like, I always wanted to be the thinnest, the smallest, and if there was any in indication that I wasn't small enough, thin enough, it just, it just, like, for lack of better terminology, ate at me. And one day I was in Target, right, and I'm just shopping around, I think I was with my mom, but we had, like, gone separate ways or whatever in the store, um, and so I was looking at stuff, and then I saw this woman, and she was so thin and so small and very tall, um, just very tall and slender, and, um, it was very rare for me at that time to see anybody that was smaller than me, although even if they were smaller, I usually didn't recognize it. Like, sometimes I'd say, oh my god, I wish I was that thin, and my friends would be like, are you fucking kidding me? <gasps> But anyways, I saw this woman, and she was just so thin, and so, like, to me, it was, like, ideal. 
to other people, it wouldn't be a healthy vision. But to me, it was like, oh my god, I need to see what she looks like again. I know, that's like total creep status. I get it, but just wait. So I'm like circling the store trying to act nonchalantly, but really looking for her to like, I just want to see her again. I want to see how thin she is again. Like, did I really just see that? Like, um, I just, I was like just enamored at how just tall and long and thin she was. <laughs> so I literally looked everywhere. I couldn't find her. I'm like, whatever, fuck it. I guess I'm just not going to see her. And I ended up back in the spot where I originally saw her and I turned around and there was a fucking mirror. It was me. It literally did, not only did it not dawn on me that, like, that was me, like, that I was staring at myself at that moment, um, but there was such a disconnect, it didn't even dawn on me that they had the same clothes on as me. Like, that should be a dead giveaway. But my body dysmorphia at that point was so bad that I couldn't even see a reflection of myself uh, for a split second and be like, oh yeah, that's me. Like, I was just like, I have to have what she has, not even realizing that, uh, dog, that's you. <laughs> So yeah, I just have to share that story because I think it's amazing how our brain can completely contort us into thinking like um, irrationally. Um, and it's just something that really stuck with me over the years that like when you get to a point that's so deep, um, it can cloud your judgment that severely. Hope you're having a good day.